Hi, it's Emily. Today I will try to answer the question, how do you change your embouchure? So I've seen that question a lot in the comments and I'm going to tell you a bit about how I changed my embouchure. So twice in my um, student career, I've had teachers tell me you should change some aspects of your embouchure. So um, the first time, I was maybe 16 and I was smiling a little bit when I was playing. Not that much, but it was kind of making making it more difficult for me. And my teacher was saying to bring it back down. So she gave me little exercises like this, you know, to counteract the smile, to uh, build some muscles here to keep my embouchure down. So I practiced that and I would look in the mirror and I would do this and then put my flute and then release and play. And so that's how I did it. But... I want to talk a bit about the mindset behind it because you can become very obsessed with that and even lose your pleasure of playing and I think you have to be careful when you're doing a change like that that maybe you t personally that's what I did I timed myself so I would be thinking about that let's say I would practice about two hours a day at that time and I would think about it from 20 to 30 minutes and then I would play and try to have a good sound, but not obsess about it. If I noticed something, I would try to do my best, but I didn't want to get stuck and obsess so much that I wouldn't work on anything else and have my technique and sight reading and all the other aspects that I wanted to improve be completely stopped because I was focusing only on one aspect. And I think if you start losing the pleasure to play, um, maybe step back a little because it's a big process. And so that's the first thing. I think a lot of the time when you have to change your embouchure, what I see the most is people smiling too much. So this exercise here, if you're smiling too much, it does work because it kind of works on the muscles that maybe you're not used to work on when you talk in your daily life. But when you play the flute, it can be a good thing to have it because that's how you, you put your, your flute here. when you. It's a bit more straight, but there's a little bit of the... Down, mo downward motion. So that's the first thing. And then again, later in my life, a teacher told me that I was pushing my upper lip forward. And by doing this, I was covering the hole with my upper lip and then the air was not coming in the right angle. So I had to work on keeping my lip close to my teeth. So not necessarily like I didn't push it there, but I had to just let it be there, not push it forward. And so that was a big work because when you're used to something, you're comfortable this way and anything that's not what you're used to is uncomfortable by definition. So even though I was told your sound will be better once you do that, at first my sound wasn't better. I had to trust that teacher. So there's a lot of trust involved in the process because it can be discouraging because you feel, wow, I'm losing my sound. I'm doing all that work to make things worse in both both cases where I had to work on my embouchure, those things happen. It gets worse before it gets better. So there has to be trust. And of course, you don't want to trust anybody, but those two teachers were good and I did well to trust them. And then also, as I said before, patience, you know, and not being too intense about it. So being patient, knowing that it will take time. Even though you did three hours of that a day, your body is not going to change a habit that you have had for I don't know, maybe a decade in three hours. You need time. So it's better to do, let's say, 10 minutes a day of that. And you can still play the flute the rest of the day. You can still think about it once in a while. But if you're really intense about it, five minutes at a time. You can do five minutes, play something else. Five minutes, play something else. But if you become obsessed with it, you might lose pleasure in playing. And that's not what you want. So it's worth it. It's worth changing little things that are making your sound more difficult to come out. But there's the whole... Uh, mindset that you have to have around that. Of course, when you really work on this aspect, the mirror is your best friend because you, you want to focus. Let's say you say, okay, that's tough for me. I'm going to do five minutes twice a day, you know, so I do five minutes of that at the beginning of my practice and I practice something else uh, without being too worried about it. And then when I do my second part of my practice, I do another five minutes there and then I do something else. That can be a good way to deal with that. And But when you do those five minutes, you're dedicated to that. And so a mirror will help you because if you're a teacher or you decided, you looked at yourself and you realized, my God, I'm pushing that lip forward way too much or I'm smiling too much or 
whatever you have to change. If you're not looking, it's pretty much certain that you're going to go back to the embouchure you had before because that's what you're used to. So look look in the mirror and only do that for five minutes. You can put a timer if you want and do a sound exercise, do a slow scale, do whatever you want to do while you focus on that. It can be a, a nice slow movement that you like. Something that's slow mostly because you want to really focus on the sound and on the embouchure. But look in the mirror, be uh, careful about it. Maybe you just do your sound exercises. You know, if, you're, if your practice routine has sound, technique, studies, and pieces, like a lot of people do, when you do the sound, you look in the mirror and you focus on that. And then when you do all the other aspects, you try to keep it in the back of your head, but it's not up front all the time. That's my opinion. Obviously, some people might be have different personalities and maybe some people will want to just tackle that and be done with it. It's okay too. For me, if I had tried, I tried to do it that way at first, the first time, and it made me very unhappy and I had no pleasure playing the flute. And I was like, what is that? You know, I'm only looking at myself in the mirror, trying to do something with my mouth that... I was not happy. I didn't think I was being musical anymore. I didn't think I had fun. So I decided to do it like like that. I think a lot of people are like me and balance is usually easier for most of us. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them down below. If you're interested in taking lessons with me, you can check in the description. And if you like the video, please like it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and see you next time. Thanks for watching.